welcome to McNeville Park here in, in Rackheel for the replay of the County Under-21 Premier Football Final, Drumbrawford and St Mary's Sean Finns. Uh, we're just about ready for throwing, so I'll hand you over to James Noonan to go through the both team lineouts. OK, James. Thanks, Tom. Starting with the St Mary's Sean Finns team, we have uh, in goals we've Denny Coleman, the full back line of Jimmy Delane, Frank Geary and Kieran English. Half back line of Paul White, Darren Jones and Patrick Wilmot. Midfield we've Sean Sheehan and Colin Barry. Half forward line of Sean White, Owner Donald and Carmel Cochet. Full forward line of Andrew White, Stephen Power and Adrian Stackpool. On the bench for Rakeel you have Owen Dillon, Gerard Mulcair, Marty Roach, John Wall, Thomas Delan, Brian Mead, Evan Linnan and Connor Lyons. The manager of St Mary Champions is Brian Duggan with selectors Dean Maughan, Kieran Barry and Marcus Sullivan and first aid of Mary Sheehan. Oh, the Junk Colour Braffer team is in goals, Garo Graney, cornerback we've Paddy, Paddy Lardin, Patrick Stack and John Barrett. Half back line of Seamus Brosnan, Darren Boyce and Keith Lacey. Midfield we've Brian Noonan, captain with Killian Fahey. Half forward line of Sean Sullivan, Paul Medigan, Michal Brosnan. Full forward line of Niall O'Brien, Daniel Collins and Kevin Noonan. One change in the Junk Colour Braffer team is uh, Damien Lacey starting. Um, uh, instead of Sean O'Sullivan. So, uh, and the subs have been for John Colour Bradford are Mikey Brown, Declan Stack, Billy Foley, Kevin Quaid, Sean O'Sullivan, Sean O'Sullivan um, Liam Shennessy, and Dennis Dunnigan. Okay, so we're, we're just about ready to start. The referee just going laying down the, the law with board captains Brian Noon and John Bradford and Darren Jones of St Mary's. We're back after the the epic game we had 10 days ago on the 31st of December and we didn't know till last night whether we'd be here or not today but thankfully the game goes ahead and hopefully the best team will win. Conditions are ideal again today for, for the game, there's probably a slight breeze out in the field but underfoot conditions are, are perfect and hopefully we'll have as good a game as we had the last day. John Brawford will definitely be looking for a better start than they did the last day, I think they were down 7 points in our score after 18-19 minutes. So. Hopefully we'll get a better start and we can take it from there. So the referee blows the whistle. Both teams are lining up the final preparations. So here we go and the game is on. Richard Maloney from Brough starts the game. And Bray Noonan wins the first break. He pops it back to Patrick Stack. Patrick Stack looks up, gives it back to Killian Fahey. Killian Fahey looking for options. Killian plays it across to Paul Medigan. Paul turns, takes a solo head up, pops it to Killian Fahey again. Plays a low ball inside. Out in front, out in front there's the right key cornerback, and Darren Jones picks up the brakes again like he did the last day. It's out to Sean Shahan. Sean Shahan is after making some ground here. He looks forward, pops it into Owen, Owen O'Donnell, who was very prominent the last day. On the ball early here. Back to Patrick Wilmot. <coughs> Wilmot. Back to Owen O'Donnell. Owen O'Donnell to Sean Shahan. Shane pops it to number seven, Patrick Wilmot. There's a nice ball inside, but out there is John Barrett with his men. John, the ball is going to, it's not going to make it out over the line. St Mary's keeping it in, 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 in play. There's an attack on here, but the jumper off it as regroup. Expected to Stephen Power. He, he wait to get the advantage, but no, the referee gives a free in, so Raquel have the first opportunity to open the scoring. Foul there on Stephen Power. Wearing number 14. And there's one or two changes on the St Mary's team. We think that there's in at number two in the cornerback position is Adrian Stackpool. And at number 15 is Jimmy Delane. And um, the other corner is Brian Mead. So first score goes to St Mary's Town Fins. We open the scoring. Point to no score. Barely a minute of play. So, Gerard Graney with the first kick out. He's going to little or no breeze. At the moment, both teams are lining out. 15 v 15, 6 forwards, 6 backs. Gerard with a good kick out. He lands out around Killian. Fahigan Killian goes up, but he's fouled, pushing the back. Richard Maloney. <coughs> Early to, good to blow the whistle early. Brawford lining it up again. Paul Medin dropping deep, picking up the ball. 
ball gets on it. Gives it to Brian Noon again. Brian, Brian pops it inside. What, it's his brother Kevin was there a foul there, but Damien Lace is out in front. Oh, Damien, his head down, head for goal. Good stuff by Damien. There's a score on here. He has to turn on his left. He turns back. He's well marked by number four. Back out there to Michal Burst. Michal pops it back again to Killian. Killian Fahey. Killian pops inside to Paul. Will Paul have a shot? He will. But that's gone to the right and wide. First wide for Jumbra Offer. But he was entitled to a shot there. He was in a scoring position. So St Mary's lead point to no score. And the first kick out for Denny Coleman. So the last day, St Mary's, they won all the breaks in the first 20 minutes. Jumbra Offer couldn't get their hands on the ball. So we'll see. From the first kick out here, the way it goes. Danny Coleman lining up his options. He seems to go straight down the middle on top of Paul Madigan and Darren Jones. And Paul wins the break and he's onto himself. He pops it inside to, to the twin. The twin is going to have a pot. That's a great score. Great score by Kevin Noonan. Great score by the twin, Kevin. <coughs> Paul Madigan won his own break and popped it inside to Kevin. And Kevin popped it over the bar. Good start. James this week? Yeah, a very good start, Mac. The breaks and main thing again, like we were struggling badly the last day. First 20 minutes we didn't win one break, but Brian that was well broke down with Paul and back onto it again. But it's a good start now, hopefully we keep it going. Yeah, so resume with it. Kick out from Denny Coleman again. Comes to this side this time. On the top of number 12, this one by Cormac O'Shea. Cormac pops it back to Darren Jones. Darren Jones on the attack, up to Owen, Owen O'Donnell. Owen O'Donnell pops it out wide. Out to Paul White, is it? Is it going to? It doesn't. Fails to. He does keep it in, but he fails to retain position. So it's one back. We Seamus Bruston back deep again in his own half back line. He pops it up to Paul Medigan. Paul's making ground again. Out to Brian Noonan. Brian pops it inside. Damien Lacey showing well again. Damien's out in front. It's just gone inside him though this time and well covered back by the St Mary's corner back. And he pops it out to his full back. And Return gives it back to the. The same player in question this year, number 15, Colin Barry. Well tackled there with the twin. Both twins are out there. And number 15, Jimmy Deland is on the probably. He's well tackled there with the jumper off. And Shamie Burson done very well along with Niall O'Brien. Now there's an attack on here for jumper off. They can pop in a great ball inside. Damien Lacey, what's he going to do? He's one on one at the moment. He takes on his men. It's good defending though with the full back. Frank Geary done very well there. And it ends up with a 45 to jumper off. So jumper off seem it. A lot more settled today than they did the last day. And great work there by Nigel O'Brien and Seamus Burston turning over the Red Keel attack. So, 45 to Drum Bradford, and it looks like Paul Medigan is lining up to take it. The linesman is just in there to show him his where to place the ball. Is Paul going to go himself or is he going to go short? Looks for his options and he gets an option from the twin and he returns it. It's a good play. If you can line it up with the score. It's a poor kick though. It's gone to the right and wide. There's a scoring opportunity, so two wides for John Bradford and one point on the scoreboard. But it's definitely a better start than last week, James, isn't it? Yeah, definitely make good start. Man. Like that was well worked out by Paul, like just is it two shots now, two unlucky ones kind of off the outside of his boot, but boys are way more settled, like they seem to be Dan and Sean very well inside like so hopefully keep Paul going in, keep hitting the full forward line because I'd say they have the beatings inside there. So resume play again with kick out from Denny Coleman. He's targeting the Colin Barry at midfield, but Keith Lacey wins the break this time. Great play with Keith. He's head down, pops it forward to Dan Collins, who's hopefully fitter than he was the last day with that injury. He's making ground here, but he, looked, he needs an option. He pops it to Niall O'Brien again. Niall pays the burn, he's making inroads. He might draw the free here, he might. Oh, he's popped it inside. Is that Keith Lacey that's gone forward? Oh, which is Paul White done well there to dispossess Keith Lacey. There was a score on there, but Jim Bradford last out in the attack there, and Paul White is making in those, but he's turned over this time. Great play by Paul Medigan, I think it is it Paul. Yeah, Paul pops in inside here to Michal Burston. Michal pops it inside to Damien Lacey. Damien, there's a 45 again, is there? Yes, it's a second 45 for Jim Bradford, and <coughs> if anything today, St Mary's look a small bit nervous on the ball. Um, Drum Bradford are tackling really well. And so far, so good. But point to piece on the board. It looks like Paul Medigan is lining it up. Will he go short again or will Ricky have covered his options? 
He goes short again and he wins it. And then Collins has gone inside his men. Colin Barry gets back there, but he's fouled, so <coughs> that didn't work for John Bradford. Raquel turned over position and resumed play with a free out taken by Duck Stike. Number Darren Jones, number six. Darren Jones plays it up to. He's being forward, I think, is it? He plays a low ball inside. He's looking for Stephen Poor, but Darren Boyce is out with him. So two is Paddy Lord and number 21. Wins it down. He pops it out to number 18. Number, there's a 1 2 1 here. Number, Sean Shane has gone through. There's a foul, is there? There's an advantage play, but or, there's a chance there, but the referee has blown it back. There was no advantage to St Mary's, so a second scoring opportunity for St Mary's. And they can once again take the lead. It looks like Colin Barry just lining it up. Just trying and go through the changes there on the St Mary's team. Says it. There's a Mar Marty Roach is wearing number 18, we think, and there's a few positional switches as well. So, oh, it's like the post and going wide. So, I'd let off for Jim Bradford there, definitely. So, both on, chances go. missed on both sides early on with eight minutes just over eight, eight minutes gone a point to piece and drum off would probably be a lot happier today than they were 10 days ago with the start <laughs> carol greeny once again taking his time lining it up he's got down boys giving him options across the full back line but i'd say he's going to go long this time he goes long out towards <coughs> out towards well one on his own boy Directing wing forward, Conor Gosher wearing number 12. He's a big powerful man. He's, in, he's got to return again. And he sizes up and lines up his options. He pops it inside. Inside to Arnold. Owen, the centre forward, Conor Gosher. Well, he stood up well with the twin, but the referee seemed it to be a free. And he's calling him back. And are we going to see a black card here? Or a yellow card? Or no card? So it's just a, a normal free into St Mary's. One there by Colin Barry, not wearing number nine. So he's a chance to redeem himself from the earlier miss. He's about 45 metres out. And he's kicking into a slight breeze that's blowing across the field, probably. So it's a poor kick, does, but it doesn't go. It's not clear they put John Bradford. He's got it on the ball again, Colin Barry. He's going to have a pot this time again. And he kicks this one over the bar. It's a good score by Colin Barry. So Raquel take the lead with a, a poor free, but he got the rebound off it and stuck it over the bar. So two points to one. And Gerald Graney with another kick out. It's county senior football champions versus county intermediate football champions from 2013. So there's plenty of talent on view. So Gerald Graney. Towards Kelly and Fahey, you'll be thinking, oh, he's gone to the right towards the twin. And the breaks again, the twin wins it. There's no break there, will win by the twin. Patrick Stack, who got on the ball at the last, he plays it across to Paul Medigan. Paul hit up straight away, pops it inside to the twin. The twin, there's a, there was a free there, was a full back for Recky, it was a small but unlucky. Frank Geary He's popped in inside, quick, quick ball to Damien Macy. Damien pops it back to Niall O'Brien. He could have a pot here, Niall, there's surely a score on here, is there? Great score by Niall O'Brien. Good score, well worked by Drum Bradford, and we're level again. Two points each. Niall O'Brien, who didn't get on the scoreboard the last day, but has a point to his name already today. But good work again with Damien Lacey. Good score there, James. Yeah, great score. Like there. The boys, have, I think, inside the full back line, they have definitely Damien and, and Kevin Sean very well. Like So if they can get the ball into Niall's pace and Paul and Braz, like there's, there's some serious serious power there off the ball. Like but Down the other end there, like, that was doing his nothing his brain that time. Like Jesus stood up like and and then ran into him, but we leave it as well leave it be. So, resume play of Drum for winning the break this time. They have more breaks won today than they did in the whole after the last, the last day's match. So it's Killian Fahey, I think that's over there trying to work it. He's worked it, he's popped it inside. So, oh, well done though by the Raquel defender there. He didn't get his number, but he tracked back well. He covered his men. You can see there are 45. There was the number four for Raquel Keane, Kieran English, who did well. There was a goal chance on there for Drum Bradford, but Jump off with their third 45, I think. <coughs> so Paul Medigan, is he going to go along this time? He's looking for an option. He goes shot and he wins it off. 
of Nigel O'Brien. Nigel O'Brien pops it back to Nigel is putting the head down, he can have a shot here on Nigel O'Brien, but that's gone to the right and wide, it was kind of outside of the left boot from Nigel. It was worth an effort, but it's uh, another wide for John Bradford, the third wide, I think. So, from Bradford, well on top at the moment, even though we're two points apiece, and Ricky still pause the threat when they do go forward, because through Orno O'Donnell and Stephen Power, they've got some very lively forwards and powerful players on the ball, so... From Bradford, we want to be on their game again, so we'll resume again with a kick out from, from Denny Coleman. Denny plays it out towards Nile O'Brien, up goes Colin Barry, as well. One great take by Barry, pops it forward, looking for number 18. But on Owen O'Donnell wins it again. Shamey Bruston stays with him, Shamey won't let him get away. Shamey's on, well done, Shamey, he makes him turn back in, but as well, popped it out. It was a misplaced pass there, but it's not clear yet, and it's another free in. That seemed to be handy enough free there, whoever committed the foul, but Richard Maloney seemed to think there was something happening in there. And it's a chance again for Akil to take the lead. It's Colin Barry again lining it up. Or is he leaving it this time? He seems to be leaving it to, to Marty Roach, I think, because it's wearing number 18. So he's a chance, he's kicking it from the hand and he pops it straight over the bar. So it's the third point for St Mary's. So they lead three points to two again. And it's tit for tat at the moment. But, uh, Drum Roff definitely winning a lot more breaks around the middle of the field. But on the last occasion, Colin Barry winning clean position and there was no break whatsoever. So ball keepers getting plenty of practice under kick outs. A fine crowd here today for the replay. Gerard he looks to go down this side out towards Killian Fahey but it's won by Colin Barry great take by Barry it's a great take fielded it over Killian Fahey not many fellas can do that so he stopped it very well for St Mary's so he plays inside the Stephen Power but Darren Boyce does really well he just got that hand in that touch in that's the vital touch Killian, Killian Fahey done well Killian looking for options pops it straight across to Steve Michal Bruston he's touched on the ground but a chance that he ends it back, but it's a free to St Mary's again. John Braff was just hanging, left him down there. So St Mary's room play quick with Paul White, who goes on the ball at the last day, he loves to go forward. He plays it down the wing. This Karma Koshe, I think, is it's making in rows number 12. He's looking for options. He pops it back to Sean Shahan. Sean Shahan back to Karma Koshe again, but it's a great block there. On the break, where will the break go? It goes to Darren Voice, was it? Shamey Burston, sorry, Shamey Burston winning the breaks. So Darren Boyce with the free for John Bradford. He's looking for options again, but all, there's not too many options out there. That was a 50 50, but he won the break off it. But he's last position now, and Karma Cushay can punish here. And he's kicked to the right and wide though. There's a let off again for John Bradford. And James, just a few small things there, a few simple basic errors that we're making that and Rakeel should be punishing, but they're not, so unfortunately. Yeah, uh, lucky enough there, Ron that was. Definitely two chances to score there, but Rakeel is just number 12, who's, who's a big man, you know, he's, he's an extra option under the kick out over under, on Patrick's deck. So maybe Garod, if he was, that's why he said Killian has moved over there to the left and we can use him off the kick out, so we need to get the hands back on the ball and get it in by, to our boys inside because they started well, like they're starving, you know, for the last two or three minutes. Okay, so we're zooming in, kick off from Garod Graney, he's targeting Killian again, but the break is won by Colin Barry and John. John Barrett is out there to pick up the breaks. Well done by John, he keeps playing. He's gone down though with an injury. He doesn't look good. He's just after he just played that ball and went down straight away. So there's a hold up and play. He's, okay. John Barrett is back on his feet again. Dr. James Noonan informed me that there's a an old injury that he has with his arm, we think, or his shoulder. So Everything hopefully will be okay for John. So we resume play with a free to Trump Bradford. And by Brian Noonan looks up. He's fouled, which is a handy free, I thought, but he's popped it inside to Michal Bruston. And Michal pops it straight off to John Barrett, who's on the ball already. Then Collins, then Collins out in front wins now. Then twists and turns, but he's looking for options as well. He played inside again into the other twin, but that's going to beat him just at the wrong side of him. St Mary's goalkeeper Denny Coleman clears his lines but only as far as Killian Fahey, Killian Fahey pops it inside but that's gone to the left and wide, just beat him, the twin, he failed to keep that in, so mistakes on both sides at the moment, it's 
been probably not easy to prepare teams during the week with all the meetings and appeals going on but thankfully we have a game here today going ahead and we'll resume play again the kick off for St Mary's he's gone straight down the middle this time so it's up between Paul Medigan and Darren Jones again but if he goes up Darren Jones wins the break and pops it outside the referee seems to free again seems to be blowing the whistle of that in the last minute or two so Darren Jones looking to play it down the right hand side Paddy Lardin gets a hand in it's well won by number 21 he's making all here he's heading for goal he's looking for options with this well blocked again but Stephen Power is on it now Stephen is going to have a shot here Stephen Power but that's gone to the left and wide and we've had a good few wides already so number 21 for St Mary's we think is Brian Mead that's wearing number 21 Paddy Lardin speaking they know so it'll take us a few more minutes to get familiar with the St Mary's players as there's a lot of different moves on it, 19 minutes, just under 20 minutes gone in the first half. Three points to two to St Mary's. And Gerald Graney comes down this side this time, up to Sean Sheehan and Killian Fahey. The break one go by Owen. Owen O'Donnell, Owen O'Donnell turning it, hitting for goal. He pops it outside to number 14, Stephen Power. Stephen looking for options. Pops it inside over this one by was John Barrett, I think, or Shamey Bursley. They got a hand in there. And it's worked out by John Bradford out to Brian Noon and pops it to Patrick Stack. Well done by Patrick Stack. He's looking for options as well. Pops it behind to Nile O'Brien. Nile O'Brien. That's better from Nile O'Brien. He's making work here. Now somebody get off his shoulder. Well done by Nile into Michal Burston. Michal Burston looking for options as well. Michal turns in. He pops it to side to Damien Lacey. Damien's well defended, well stood up there. Pops it out again to Killian Fahey. He's looking for a minute outside. Can this bring it around now? Nile O'Brien can go on his left leg here if he wants to. Oh, it's well blocked down the, it's blocked down to the, the twin by Kevin Noonan. That's gone over the score. Well done by John Bradford. He thought the chance had gone, but eventually he fell to Kevin Noonan and he popped it over the bar. But patient build up from John Bradford. And we're 20 minutes gone, James. We're level three points apiece for last week. We were down six, if not seven points at this stage. Yeah, we've started a lot better. Like we've, we've really 50 50 in the middle of the field, I could say. Like guards, guards breaks. Like, um, Niall has shown great, there's well, like, shown great pace onto the ball, like, if they can use him, hold it up and then him off the shoulder, like, he's, he's a great outlet there, so it's better than last week, you know, Tom will tell you that much. Yeah, definitely, James, so Michal Burston winning the break there, and pops it inside to Paul Medigan, Paul, which is back to goal, turns, gets around, he pops it back to Michal Burston again, or sorry, Darren Boyce, Darren Boyce has gone forward into a forward position to Dan Collins, that's a kind of a hospital pest, but as well in there with the twin, and there's a calm... Colin Barry, sorry, he's slowly but surely picking himself up with the ground, which was a hospital pass. So, Keith Lacey done really well with Sean Shea, and Sean Shea wins the free though, but Keith, Keith Lacey done very well there to slow him down, stand him up. So, St Mary's looking for options through Darren Jones from the resulting free. They have a man down across the field on his knees. He, Oh no, oh, yeah, yeah. Donald winning position in Shamey Rustin staying with him on his tail. Colin Barry plays it in high ball inside, but the option inside is Karma Koshe, I think, and it is well done there by Patrick Stack, though. Great play by Patrick Stack. Well done by Patrick Stack. He's looking for options again. He works it out to, I think it was over there at Nile O'Brien again, is it? And Shamey Rustin is on it now. Good play by Shamey, looking for options as well. Into Den Collins, Den's out in front. Well done by Den. Get down over it. And look up now, there's up Damien Lacey showing inside. Damien is out in front and he's won it. He needs to get support in there now. He's all in his own. He slows it down. He's, well done, but he's gone to ground though and he's won a free Damien Lacey. There was kind of a high challenge there by the St Mary's number four, Kieran English, I think. And Damien Lacey went down holding his face. And it's an opportunity for probably Kevin Noonan, though it's a small bit far out. Is it within his range? We'll know within a few minutes. So. Bridget Downs is in. See. Is everything okay? And it isn't. There's a quick free in there to Darren Boyce, who's gone forward a lot. And that's to Kevin Noon. Will that go over the bar? It, yes, it will. Great score by Kevin Noon. And well done by Kevin Noon. He was hanging in the air for ages, and Darren Boyce played a big part in that. He took the pass and gave, gave the return to Kevin, and Kevin popped it over the bar. So, John Bradford lead for the first time. Four points to three. Well work score 
Damien Lacey, Sean Yolak, Dan Collins and Kevin Noonan, the full forward lane, are doing really well with Niall O'Brien playing a bit deeper. So Damien Lacey just receiving some attention inside, but we resume with the kick out towards Colin Barry. He won well there by Colin Barry, that's a great take. He's winning a lot of clean ball and he's won his free as well. Well, it's not free, but he probably deserved it after a great take. So Darren Jones, the playmaker for Centre Back, out to Sean Sheehan, the county senior panellist, plays the forward to Owen. Owen O'Donnell again, Owen is turning and heading for goal with Shamey Russell is in company with Darren Jones, has got drifted forward like he did the first day. This could be a faking great goal. That was a brilliant goal by Darren Jones off the left foot. And we thought the last day there was a lucky goal, but there was no luck about that. It was a brilliant finish by Darren Jones, the centre back, who drifted forward and got a great goal. Great boost for St Mary's, James. Yeah, it was a great goal, Mick. You, just, you could see him running there, Paul. He was off his shoulders and then hitting the ball. But it was a great finish. Top corner, got no chance of a goal. But you know, midfield, Colin Barry is really showing his size and he's winning good ball. Like, maybe Brian needs to get in behind him and just break it because he is a big man. Like, so. Yeah, it was a great finish by Darren Jones and it gives St Mary's a two point advantage again. The last day he got forward like that and we, we didn't give him the credit he deserved probably with the finish. But today, Gerald Green had no chance and Darren Jones put it to the top right hand corner of Gerald Green's net. So, advantage with St Mary's again. That looks like it's a line ball to Drummer Offer, so hopefully it can reply with a the score. Dan Collins with the bounce piece then. And it's well won there by the number 15, even though he's playing cornerback. And Dan Jones is on the ball again. He plays a forward, but it's out by Paddy Lord and Paddy was fouled. Great play by Paddy Lord and he played from the front. So Drummer Offer will resume play with a free by Dan Boyce, who pops it to the twin. Brian Owen and the captain of the team, Brian, looking for options again. It's well won there by Paul White, was it? But Michal Burson done really well to return with game position. And he's fouled and turned. And he's plays inside into the twin again. Kevin Owen, but it bounces away from him. But it's a poor touch by Kevin. And he's gone away from him. Rakeel, turnover position. And Owen O'Donnell is on the ball again. Owen O'Donnell, to really mean he gets position, he turns and faces goal, which is always dangerous for John Bradford out here to, to Wilmot. Wilmot stood up by Neil O'Brien, but John Barry gets a hand in. Well done by John Barry, but the break falls towards Wilmot again and Keith Lacey. Oh, yeah. It was a handy free, I think, now in fairness. Sorry, it was more shoulder to shoulder. And a free under St Mary's number seven. Patrick Wilmot. <laughs> so, that's quite a difficult <laughs> angle. So, I think that St Mary's is one of something that they'll walk this across the front of the goal. Oh no, Dan, let's leave it to Colin Barry. Colin Barry will surely look to go shot. Sure, he's lining it up on the ground, so he thinks he's going to have a go at it. If, he, if anything, it's going to get in around the square and get all grain, he's going to have to be alert. So he goes shot, though, and he does too. He surely look for the return from Ona Donnelly. He does too, he gets the return. And there's a score on here. That's a great score by Colin Barry and John Bradford were a small bit asleep for that. It's a great score from Colin Barry, so St Mary's lead four, one four to four points. The goal and the difference, but definitely Colin Barry and Owen O'Donnell are featuring a lot after 26 minutes. And hopefully John Bradford can reply with the score and just keep the two or three points in it up to half time. Gerard Greeny, Gerard goes straight down the middle this time towards Killian Fahey and Sean Sheehan. With Paul White wins the rake again. Paul White he's making inroads. He's making inroads here. He's still going. Paul White. He's looking for options. He drew the man. So John Barrett had to. Oh, it was a poor, poor finish by a let off there for John Bradford. But John Barrett was drawn towards the man. He had no option but to go towards him. So he left John Barrett's man free, and it was a poor finish and a let off for John Bradford. And James, after 26, seven minutes, what do you think? We could be doing better or should be doing better? Yeah, definitely, Mac. We should, like, we start our forwards again now for the last five, five to seven minutes. Like, but, like, we're winning nothing on the field. Maybe get out the kick, it's coming a bit high for the boys. Like, um, it seems to be a rack heel ball all the time. Like, they're just breaking it down. But we're still, still great to that break, isn't it, Mac? So. Brian Mead getting on the break there and the line ball going towards St Mary's. They're starting to win those breaks that they were winning early the last day, but knowing the jump rifle as they want, they're not finished at all. Ronald gets on the ball again. 
and he turns and heads for goal and he's making roads here again. You can see it was well blocked down by the twin though. Brian Noonan, great defending by Brian and Trump Rafford hopefully now can bring this out and put together a serious attack but Rakeel are defending in numbers and they're getting across as well. So Patrick Stack plays it down the line to Dan Collins, then wins it well. Good take by Dan, he gives the return to a surely a free there, is it? Surely see. They're looking for a quick free, he plays it across to Paul Medigan, Paul looking up, looking for his options. He's played it across to John Barrett, John Barrett's not going to make it though. It's well done by number two though. Jimmy Delane for St Mary's has opened the forward line but he's won it back in his customary position in the cornerback. St Mary's playing it out now nice and slowly through, through the full back, Frank, Frank Geary, Frank, Frank, Frank clears his lines. He's fouled from where the ball ends. So that was a handy free again. It's just a late, slightly late tackle, but Richard Maloney is having none of it and free from where the ball ends. So it's an attacking position again for St Mary's. And they'll be very happy with the scoreboard at the moment 1 4 to 4 points. And it's the main man at the moment, Colin Barry, just lining up the free. He looked to go shocked again, he does. Kidian Fahey, Kidian Fahey, and Sean Sheehan, Sean Sheehan, toward the hand, and he goes forward again. He's gone straight down the middle. He, he's going to see still making, he's over carried the ball, yes, and you could hear from the supporters there that they were advising him to play out the ball, but he had just held on to it for that split second too long, and John Brafford have overturned him, and John Brafford will badly do with a score now, just before half time. So it's true, Keel is, or Shamey Burson is taking this. Shamey plays it straight down the middle to Niall O'Brien, but Niall make it. Damien Lacey makes it in turn. And that's off the ground, and Damien Lacey is deemed to have picked it off the ground. It was a harsh enough one, he was probably pushed in the back as well, but Owen O'Donnell, and Owen O'Donnell gives it away to Paul Medigan, so Jim Brafford has an opportunity here to to close the score before half time in towards Dan Collins, then looking for options. He was got a slight tug there, but he played away to Damien Lacey, to Paul Medigan takes the return. Paul can kick this one hopefully over the bar, and yes he can, great score by Paul Medigan. So, we're 145 points and a score that Trump Crawford badly needed. We thought the opportunity had gone from St Mary's had won a free out, but in turn on O'Donnell gave away possession. And the referee is looking for the ball and at half time it's Rakeel St Mary's, Rakeel 1 4, Trump Colour Crawford 5 points, and we'll go for a cup of tea and resume in a few minutes for the second half. Just about to resume the second half. With St Mary's Racky leading one four to five points. Just looking through both teams. Both teams there doesn't seem to be any changes, a few position switches, but John Bradford win the throw in with Brian Noon. Brian pops it inside. Then Collins is out in front well won by then, but good tackle by the number fifteen again. Adrian Stackpool, I think, is it to Sean Sheehan, but that's a poor kick from Sean that's going to make it to the line with that as well. One by Stephen Power though, great play by Stephen Power. And he pops it back, pops it back to number four and Colin Barry. Colin Barry is on the attack again and Brian Owen is getting back to him. Brian is getting back but Colin Barry goes at the right this time. He goes for a kick but oh, Jesus there was a left off there but it's not gone yet. Carmack O'Shea is still there but he goes for a score but it's gone to the right and wide and a, a serious left off there for John Brafford early on. A shot in by Colin Barry in a drop shot and Carmack O'Shea got a fist to it. But lucky enough for John Brafford, Gerard Graney between Gerard and Darren Boyce or Patrick Steck, I think it was a Darren Boyce. Was in there too with Patrick Stack and Gerard Graney just managed to keep it out. Uh, kick out for Gerard again. So warning signs are there for John Bradford. And Gerard is going straight down the middle towards Kitty and Fahey again. Kitty goes up with the break is won by St Mary's again. And they, so we'll just, it's one one double. Colin Barry again who's getting on the ball quite a lot. He's looking for options. He plays inside to. This, Matty Roach, Matty Roach, Sean Sheehan is making roads here, there's a chance of a score here, ooh, it's just gone over the bar by Sean Sheehan, and St Mary's extend their lead to three points, one five to five points, so good start again by St Mary's in the second half, and James, we were looking not to concede the second goal there from Karma Cushay. Yeah, very lucky there, Max, Sean Sheehan made a great run in again, like, and they really have the breaks there again, number 18 won that one well, like, Keith needs to, I don't know really, but there's... Spies are the wrong sides again, like maybe maybe we need to catch a few balls in the middle or something. Something needs to be done uh, fast. Because Killian Fahey there with the break is won again by Orno Donnellan. He pops it back to Sean Sheehan who pops it inside. 
and Patrick Stack is out in front this time and the break, where's the break on the goal? Paddy Lardin gets down over Paddy if Paddy was pushed in the back, good play by Paddy Lardin. So John Crawford has a chance there's a kick fast kick, free kick taken to Brian Noonan. Brian looking for his options, he pops it outside to John Barrett. John usually does the simple things well and this time he does the same. Was out to Paul Medigan, there's room on the right hand side for Niall O'Brien, but Niall cuts in and Paul Medigan takes off down the middle. Uh, he's surely I fouled, he's surely a black card or he's some sort of a card, if not a yellow. So we'll have to see what the referee is going to do here. I think it's number five, is it? No, sorry, number two, number 21 that committed the foul. So what's Richie Maloney going to do here? He's definitely taking a name and he's issuing a black card. So this is the first time we've come across this. So it's a... <laughs> Ace of Spades we've been called here, so St Mary's have to make a substitution here, replacing number 21 with a, with a poor kick there with the zoom. Darren Jones cleaning up there at centre back. He plays it across to number 7. That's Wilmot, I think Patrick Wilmot, who works it across towards his. There's a dodgy hand pass there, but it's won by number 15, and St Mary's are working it out now. A jump Rodford. Don't win position there. One of the jump Rodford lads is down injured, it looks like Nile O'Brien, but. Owen O'Donnell is making serious ground here. He's heading towards the 21 and he's got two or three jump off. Level. You see foul, yes he was. It was a handy free again for St Mary's. And St Mary's now can extend their lead to four points. So, there's a free in here again. And there's a, I think it looks like Owen O'Donnell is down injured. So That looks like the replacement in there for the black card that's gone into Richard Maloney. And we'll just have to wait and see his number. He's wearing number eighteen, is it? Number no, it's not. It's number twenty-three. Sorry, so number twenty-three is on for St Mary's. Number twenty-three is Connor Lines. So he's the first, first man to be introduced as the black car substitution in the Limerick Championship. He thinks. And there's a chance for St Mary's to extend their lead here. With a free, more or less, in front of the goals, 21 yards out. It's an easy enough opportunity, and he kicks it straight. Oh, sorry, he's kicked it to the left and wide, and that's a serious let off for John Bradford. So, poor wide for St Mary's, and a let off for John Bradford. And John Bradford really haven't come out of the starting blocks yet in the second half. And we'll resume play again with another kick out for Gerard. Certainly around the middle toward the half back line, midfield and half hour line. St Mary's definitely have the advantage in that area. Gerard Craney this time lowered the trajectory, but up goes the twin, but it's won again by Matty Roach wins all the breaks and Colin Barry again is on the ball. He's having a fine game at midfield. He goes toward the hand, pops it inside. Stephen Paul played very well the last day. He goes for a score here. And that's a great score by Stephen Power. Serious score by Stephen Power. And John Bradford now trailed by four points, one six to five points. And James, John Bradford, if they want to be getting a score now, or the thing, the game will start to slip away. Yeah, I reckon number 18 is winning breaks there easily every time. Like it's just simple every time. Every time he comes down, he's on the ground, he's won the ball. Like and we need to get the ball in our hands into our forwards because like, it's all one way at the moment. Yeah, certainly James called it as he sees it, and up goes. The break again, holding the break to some Killian. In fact, he gets on it eventually. Well done by Killian, he pops it to Dan Collins, then back to Killian. And the referee has blown him for a throw there. And all the small things now seem to be going against from Bradford and Richard Maloney. It can be very picky at times, and he picked that one. So Darren Jones, his own play with a free, he'll go along this time in towards Carmack O'Shea again. The target man inside Carmack out in front. Patrick Stack is going to stand him up, but he goes toward the hand. Patrick Stack standing him up again. He looks for options back to Owen O'Donnell. Warner Donnell is taking off, he's gone through, he's gone through, there's a, there's a chance of a score here, oh jeez, there's a great block by Gerard Green, he got the block in there with number 23, and another let off for John Bradford, and at the moment, John Bradford are just hanging on, but they're not going away, oh, and it's a poor pass in, but Paul Medigan wins it, and he's won a free as well, great play by Paul Medigan, quickly takes the free to Niall O'Brien, so we need a score here now fast from John Bradford, and Niall O'Brien, he's gone down the right hand side, he shrugs off Darren Jones. He's looking for options inside, but he's dispossessed there by number four. Great play by number four, Kieran English. Great play by Kieran, and he's won a free as well. 
Thank you, Kieran English. Great play by St. Mary's. And there's a St. Mary's man gone down. I think it's number seven, Patrick Wilmot. And the referee is talking to Dan Collins. Dan Collins obviously wasn't happy with the free that was given against him earlier on for the hand pass. But St. Mary's have a player down, but the referee is happy to continue play. It's Dan Jones again, it's a straight up the win. Ono Donald, the twin will have to get across there and win that. That looked like a free to St. Mary's, but Richard Maloney plays the advantage or plays on. And he walks it out to Keith Lacey. Jim Bradford, Pedding needs a score. But the Brian only wants to watch his back here. There's a man on his back, and that's Colin Barry who's been with him all day. But Brian does well, but pass goes slightly astray. And that's Nigel O'Brien again. Nigel pops it out to Killian Fahey. Killian Fahey trying to make inroads, but Nigel O'Brien. Nigel O'Brien now has a bit of space in front of him. He pops it outside to Damien Lacey. Damien, Damien goes to. Uh, he surely fouled there, Damien Lacey, and he was too. He was fouled by Stephen Power. But it's all very tight back there, James, isn't it? The Trumbrafford fouls haven't. Don't seem to have any room whatsoever to work off of, and that's credit due to St Mary's defence. Yeah, they're doing well. They're getting good numbers back, Mac. Oh, that time there, now when when Lyle stood up, like there was nothing really shot in front because they'd been covered everywhere. Like Damien did well to win the free. That's something we can maybe work on and get the ball in down, get a free or something because it's, there's no way to get through that defence the way they're lined out. That's true, James. So then Collins lining it up. He kicked one similar to last day, so hopefully. He'll do the same today. We'll give him a chance. He lines it up. It's going to drop shot, is it? No, it got off drop shot, but it drops <laughs> over the bar. So, badly needed score by John Bradford. So, 1 6 to 6 points, and there's still only a goal from Darren Jones between the teams. And John Bradford, if they could get a 10 minute spell where they could dominate and take advantage, who knows? They could close the gap out. So, Denny Coleman, nine minutes, just under ten minutes gone in the second half, so we've twenty minutes to go, but that's better by Brian Noonan. He won the break there, there was no clean catch for Colin Barry and then gosh Jamie Burston, harsh enough free I thought, seemed to play the ball, but it's a free out for St Mary's again. A lot of handy frees and Sean Shea wins position here and turns and he stood up by Killian Fahey though, that's good play by Killian and Dan Jones does well again, Dan Jones. Colin Barry out to plays it up the line, up the line. John Barrett will get a hand in great play by John Barrett. Well done by John Barrett. That's surely a fall. Ah, that was surely a free riff. No. Oh. And it resu results in a line ball to St Mary's, which I thought was a free out to John Bradford, but the referee in linesman didn't think so. So Paul White, one of the main players on the St Mary's team. He goes up the line and Killian Fahey is won by Sean Sheehan. Sean Sheehan looking for options. It's won by number two again. He's throws the ball, it's it. Sean Sheehan wins it back. And Owen O'Donnell, Owen pops it across to Matty Roach. I think it's Matty twist, turns left and right, but he's blocked down. Brilliant block down. He's looking for options again. He pops it outside. Who's on the ball this time? It's back to Owen O'Donnell. Owen O'Donnell working it. Same way as the working this time. Will he kick it? Yes, he will. It looks like it's gone over. Yes. So it's a reply to Jumbra for three at the other end. And Marty Roach has kicked his second point. So St Mary's hold on to that four point lead. And Jumbra just seemed to can't close out the gap of four points, three points. But Gerald Gray able to kick out again. He's gone straight down the middle this time. Was there pushing the back down? Yes, there was. The referee was late enough in blowing it, but Killian Fahey wins the free. And he's looking for him to take it a yard or two back. Then from Bradford forwards, looking for, to make moves and make options for Killian. And this one by Michal Burston. Michal Burston takes the ball and he's confronted by Dan Jones. Dan Jones stands up. Michal Burston looking for a, a pop off, but it's one by Damien Lacey. Damien Lacey is heading for goal and he was surely fouled this and not, there was no free there either and you'd think that was surely a free but not, St Mary's turned it over and out they come through Paul White and there's a black card there I think now, could be a black card there I think, there's definitely a foul there it's a, so have we got a second black card of the day, it looks as if it was a trip on black on Paul White and going by the new rules anything like a foot trip or a block 
will result in a black card. And yes, it is. It's a black card, and it's Michal Burston that's gone. So that's a serious blow to John Bradford. They're doing one of their top players, Michal Burston, through the new rules. And that's a serious setback now, and a serious bonus to to St Mary's and they're on the attack here and Matthew Roach has gone inside Keith Lacey and there was a foul there as well I'd say yeah and the referee is giving a free in there as well and Keith Lacey was just caught at the wrong side of that free and had a slight pull on Matthew Roach and the referee didn't play the advantage and in turn gave a free in front of the goals to St Mary's so with the score at 176 points I think it'll be 1-8 to 6 after this and five points down, and down Shane or Michal Burston as well. It's going to be a tall order. I'll just hand you over to James for a second to see what he thinks of the whole thing. I don't know really, Matt. Like, it's, it's tough to watch it tomorrow. Like, losing Michal now is going to be massive. Like, we definitely need a goal, if not two. Like, and Braz is our man to do that. And losing him over what they call the new rules, man. It's, I don't know really, Matt. It's, it's, it doesn't look good at the moment. We're down 1 8 to 6, so 5 points down. We're down 6 points halfway through the last day. It seems to be a taller, taller test today. St Mary's looking at Chapper and Fisher. And Gerard Graney with the kick out again. He's gone straight down the middle this time. So up goes Brian Nolan and Colin Barry. Swung by Shamie Burston. Good play by Shamie. Oh, it looks like the, the, the number 22. Liam Shennessy that's in for the black card of Michal Bruston, so Liam Shennessy hopefully he can make an impact. Nile O'Brien looking for options as well, Killian Fahey, Darren Boyce is over here on the lift on his own, but St Mary's have loads of players drop back, so that's a poor pass then, and that's a poor free, and it's a free in then, so a bit of a let off for John Bradford there, St Mary's should have their lines cleared, but in turn, St Mary's player overcarried the ball. I think it was Stackpool. So it will result in a free, more or less, in front of the goals for Dan Collins. He's a nice bit out there, but it's a score that Trump Bradford would badly need. A very little score from play. Nothing scored, I think, in the second half from play. And hopefully, Dan can kick this over. It'll drop over the bar. Good score by Dan. So, 1 8 to 7, 4 points again. But we we'll definitely need some a major score, like a goal, a green flag, I think, if we're to have any joy here today. So, Liam Shennessy seems to have gone straight into the centre forward position, I think he is, picking up Darren Jones. So, hopefully, Liam can get on some ball early on and get just get him into the game. So, that's gone straight down the middle towards Brian Noon, and Brian Noon goes up well. It's well done by Colin Barry, though. That's a great take by Colin Barry. And he's definitely winning his own share of position out on the middle of the field, their clean position too, which is vital for the St Mary's attack. So, Owen O'Donnell, Owen O'Donnell, he's going up to Matty Roach again, who's definitely had an impact in this game. And Darren Roach, Darren Jones, sorry, he's gone forward again, loves to go forward, this number six. He goes left and right, he's looking for options inside. What will this be? It's a great score again. It's a third point, I think, for Matty, Matty Roach, is after kicking his third point. And from Bradford are, are, are in serious trouble here. St Mary's look to kicking their scores a lot easier and working their scores a lot easier. Whereas Jim Bradford are depending on frees at the moment to get on the scoreboard. So Gerard Graney goes a bit shot at this time for Shamie Bruston. Well won by Shamie. He surely fouled but their free says play on. Shamie's looking for options. He goes towards that. That was Liam Shennessy. Liam Shennessy just stood waiting for it. But St Mary's cleared the lines through Darren Jones. Darren Jones out over the line. John Barrett. 197 points. St Mary's well in control since they got the goal early on from Darren Jones. Keith Lacey passes it back towards Killian Fahey. Killian Fahey. Now the ring goes deep looking for it. He wins it. Now he's stood up now, but now he makes a bit of ground. And outside him here is Dan Boyce. Dan. We'll give it to Darren now and hopefully Darren can carry it forward. He stood up again and gives the return to Niall. He's inside now. So he has to show off it inside, Dan Collins oh. does. 
Dan Collins has gone down the left hand side. He's gone towards the inline. He's got Frank Geary for the company. And he's well, he's well dispossessed by Frank Geary, the full back. And Stephen Power is back there. He'll be out now. And it's saying, yeah, he's a really on form now. They're really throwing the passes together. And this is Paul Hood, the player to carry the ball. He'll carry it forward. And Damien Lacey, Damien Lacey is behind him. And Paul White is still making serious inroads here. And he's one of three again. And Paul White. He's one of three straight in front of the goals again for St Mary's and it seems that we can extend the lead to six points. And <coughs> Brian Newman could do this with there. He just got across him, which was enough to <laughs> enough to cause a free. And there's a chance to go six points ahead here. <laughs> one ten to seven let's say after this kick after I'm just 18 minutes gone so we've just under 12 minutes to go and six points in it it's and Colin Barry kicks it straight between the posts and it's a six point lead now for St Mary's and with 12 minutes to go James is there anything that can be done on the line or any move that we can make that can change things around it yeah they've brought in Sean Sullivan and half back there for Keith trying to stand number 18 was just He's, what is he? Three points, three points kicked, like so. Definitely, just, I don't know, really. Like, and it's Paul, maybe Paul in the verge of the square and trying to hit him long or something like that. Like, I don't know. There's nothing going on there. So, we'll get a kick out. The break was won by Colin Barry again, and it result in another ticking here for Shamey Burston, I think. And this could be another black card, could it? Oh, yellow card this time, so Shamey Rustin on the yellow and resume with another free to St Mary's. And Richard Maloney just telling the players to get to their feet. And little Darren Jones looking up, he goes shot this time into Ono Donnell. Ono Donnell twist and turn. Comes out far enough to, to face the goal and pops it back to Sean Shane. Sean Shane can line up the score here. That just goes to the right and wide up. He's just shot the small, which is a good effort from Sean Sheehan. And at the moment, St Mary's are in total command. Especially on the middle third, half back line, midfield and half hour line are totally on top of the John Bradford players. And hopefully with 10 minutes to go, there might be something left in the John Bradford lids. But at the moment, St Mary's are a better team and the scoreboard is in line. Oh, well won by Killian Fahey though, Killian looking forward, look who's in Shenessee, he's gone forward here, he's looking for options, and pop it forward to Dan Collins, but Dan's Henry just left him down the small bit, it's back to Niall O'Brien, but that's a poor effort to drop shot, but who's going to fall to, is there a chance here for Kevin Owen, Kevin Owen, oh jeez, he's given the penalty, I don't believe it, it's a penalty for John Bradford, and it was a, a soft enough penalty I think, whatever he blew it for, so, it's a chance here for John Bradford to get themselves back into it. We'll take it anyway, whether we were Jews or not, but it's an opportunity. We're not too sure who's going to line up and take it yet. We'd probably have been Michal Burson if he was on the field. But I think Derry McCarthy has come in and pointed to Dan Collins to take it. So number 14, Dan Collins is lining it up against the number one, Denny Coleman. We need this back, definitely. This is, this, is, this is just to give us a chance. And he stuck it in the, hit the fucking post, I don't believe it. So that's the way it goes. He hit the post and came back out and cleared. So when your look is in, your look is in, and your look is out, it's out. So then Collins hitting the butt of the post with the penalty. And with that, it's very hard to see how Racky are going to lose this match. But Paul Medigan will resume. There's still 10 minutes left, he'll drop it in around the house. No, instead he'll go short, he'll go straight across to, to Sean Sullivan. Sean Sullivan working the forward into Killian Fahey. Killian Fahey will line it up. They're looking for options, but they're trying to work it across. But Shami Burston will have a shot, but that's not going to go over. It's going to go to the left and wide. And well, we had a penalty just over a minute ago with a chance of a goal. We ended up with no score and a kick out for St Mary's and James. I think that just about sums up our day. That's it, definitely, Mac. I, I don't know, did the keeper get touched or to go straight off the post? But God, it was, it was straight off the post, and he didn't talk like, but 
Oh, look, he's just. It's not here, Mackie, don't know where it is. No, well, I suppose you make your own look too, and in fairness to St. Mary's, they've been the better team, so they still hold on to their six point lead. And up goes Brian Noonan with the Colin Barry, who's been outstanding today, and in fairness to Brian, he's done his part as well. But Paul Medigan wins the break and heads for goal, but Killian Fahey is here to the left, all on his own, if Sean Sullivan can see him, but Sean Sullivan will pop it inside, there's an advantage being played here. I uh, know, and Darren Jones, but there was no advantage. And in fairness to Richie Maloney, he blew the whistle when he saw that Trump Rafa weren't going to get an advantage out of it. And there's a chance here for Kevin Noonan to, to drop the score, drop this one over the bar, he take it. There's no point dropping this in around the square, drop it over the bar, and we're down to five points now, which is still quite a lot. But we still need that green flag, I'd say, and the <laughs> penalty hitting the post. Would have given St Mary's great confidence too. So. Maybe the patience doesn't make like we're. It kind of looks like we're going to go for a goal there. Like, but maybe if we send it back in you now and kick the score, like Shaq is really down the ball and he came on as a like a good man on the ball from the soccer. Yeah, we were doing play with Brian Noonan going up and Brian has won, or Dan Collins has won, and Brian, yeah, well won by Brian Noonan, but Dan Collins was such a jumper off, and they're just starting to win one or two breaks now, but this is a small bit too late, time will only tell, and then goes into Brian Noonan, Brian wins this one, well done by Brian, he's turning on to goal, and he's won another free, so this is another chance, so. We're at 110 to 8 at the moment. 110 to 8 points at the moment. And number 18 has gone down injured, and then Collins kicks that over, so it's 110 to 9 now, so four points. Which is there still a chance? Is, are we going to have a finish like we had the last day? Rakeel won't want any finish like the last day, they like to continue on the way it is. Come on, John Bradford! Continue Come on, their four Jesus. point lead. Come on, Marty! Danny Coleman. Oh, he resumed the kick out again. We still haven't got any score from playing the second half, I don't think. Up goes Paul Medigan. The break is won by Darren Jones again. Darren does really well. He goes down over. Great play by Darren. Pops it out to Carmack O'Shea, who's come out around the middle of the field again for the last 10 minutes of the game. And he's showing his power and pace. And the rest inside doing him the world of good. He backs it back to Arno Donald to Sean Shahan. Sean Shahan looks for his options. Dan Jones has drifted forward again. Sean Shahan, who likes to play the ball, he's gone forward. He's mid serious ground here. He pops into Darren Jones, and Darren Jones can kick off the left. Oh, yes. And that's won by Patrick Stack. Great hands by Patrick. He's in the right place at the right time. He could have went anywhere. He works it out to Dan Collins. Dan, who's gone very deep now, so we need to get men forward as well. But then, look, Paul Medigan is an option, but then takes to the foot forward. Yeah, great play by Paul. Aye, Paul. Aye. Aye, he was surely foul there. Great play by Paul. And that's a foul. Patrick Steck had dropped forward, or pushed forward, I should say. And Raquel now have time to get men back. So Shamie Russell sizes up the options. He's got Liam Shennessy, the sub in for the black card. He's trying to make inroads, and he was fouled as well. Good play by Liam Shennessy. He showed well for the ball since he's come in. And James with just about seven or eight minutes left, he thinks. The time is probably going to come against this, but. I think there's a number, another sub coming in over there, number 19, is it? Declan Stack, yeah, brother Patrick Stack seems to be coming in for Neil O'Brien, I think, yeah. Yeah, look, if Den can get this one out, Den's kicking well. That's the one we need, you know, definitely. So there's a kick again from Den Collins, and three from Den are definitely giving Drum Brad for the lifeline, but we still have no trip from play, score some play in the second half. And Sean Sullivan, who's come over here to pick up Karma Cushia, and then wearing the number 12 of Kitty and Fahey and Sean Shahan. Sean O'Donnell and Brian Moon picking up Colin Barry. So it's targeted towards Den Collins and Paul Hoyt. Paul Hoyt goes up well and wins it. Well won by Paul Hoyt. And he'll make him down down here. And William Shen is still trying to stand Doing really well, Paul Hoyt. Great pace and great skill by Paul Hoyt up the line. And he's stopped up by John Barrett. Great play by John Barrett. Karma Cushé uses his strength to Arno Donald, who's gone straight across the, the 45. And he's trying to make inroads here. And this looks very promising for St. Mary's. Back to Stephen Powell. And will he kick it over the bar? It's great score by St. Mary's in response to 
from Brad for two or three points beforehand. And that could be the insurance score, insurance point as they call it. 11 to 10 points. And James Gray scored by St. Mary's. Yeah, Paul White, uh, he, he must have carried us 60 yards back to the end. It's a great work around him once, once Stephen Paul got it. He kicked it. It's a great work for him. Colin Barry's coming again. Really yeah, Colin Barry's really played a fine game here today. He goes for a shot and it just drops shot. Good hands by Gerard Graney. Gerard looking for, to play it across to Patrick Stack. Patrick Stack, who's had a fine game again today, plays it out. He's looking for someone to take it off him. And he goes towards. Declan Stack, I think it's Declan, his brother Declan, Declan, Declan Law is dispossessed by Stephen Power, who does really well, he uses his strength and power, oh no, Daniel is on the ball again, now St Mary's are really finishing strong here, and Stephen Power is drifted in here, there's a goal chance on here, we'll finish the game off, great save, and will it go in, no it won't, a great save by Gerard Graney, and Shamie Burston was there to clear it off the line, and great defending and great goalkeeping by Gerard Graney, denied Stephen Power a certain goal, it was a great effort and a great save and James I definitely think with just under two minutes to go that Trim Bradford are <laughs> Trim Bradford are just about holding on. So Dan Jones and Colin Barry line it up, but I'll give you the the option of naming the men in the match or the honour of naming the men in the match. Uh Mac I'd um, I suppose you could say Matthew Watch got to get four points in play but Really, the driving force for Sir Akil, I suppose, would, would have been number nine, Colin Barry. I really. give it to him because he's won everything in midfield. He's broke every ball and he's just kicking freeze constantly. Yeah, I'll go with you there, James. He's just after kicking a 45 yard, it's dropped shot into the John Bradford full back line, but it was worked up by Paul Madigan. And Paul looks for options again. Time is against John Bradford now, but. Definitely the better team, St Mary's on the day after all the controversy during the week. It didn't affect them on the field of play, so Jim Bradford can have no regrets. They were beaten by the better team, and that's a poor pass. It's gone straight into the hands of Darren Jones, I think, who's been another top performer today for St Mary's. As well, Matthew Roach has been definitely in there as well from Paul Hoyt. He could nearly give every one of the St Mary's, and Paul Hoyt kicks it over the bar. That's definitely the insurance point. And with Time nearly up, we're in 112 to 10 points, and Sean Paul Hoyt getting on the scoreboard from half back, and he's had a fine game again over the two games. He's been outstanding, and we're just under a minute of normal time left, we think, and Jim Bradford are, and haven't given up trying in fairness, and they've never thrown in the toll, but it just hadn't worked out from under the day. And Kieran English does really well there, and Damien Lacey, and it's all over. And the Mary Champions of the County Under 51 Premier Football Champions for 2013 on the 11th of January 2014. And we congratulate them, John Bradford. Congratulate St. Mary's on their victory. Well deserved, the better team over the two games, meetings. And James, I don't think we can have any regrets. No, we can't, and I think. I suppose it's just saying like they were definitely the better team today. Like, they're just in there. They're up and coming. They've won the intermediate last year. There's some great players there. Like, so. Congratulations to Akeel and sure, we have to keep our heads up after that. We can have no complaints, the better team won on the day and we wish St Mary's all the best and hopefully they'll enjoy the celebrations and no fault to the John Bradford lads either, they tried their best but it just didn't work out all the two games. So we'll leave you from Mick Neville Park and Rakeel with Rakeel celebrating and John Bradford bitterly disappointed but there's always another day. So thank you very much from James Noon and myself. Take care. <laughs> we'll see a couple of footballers of us. Uh, first of all, um, on behalf of the, the County Limerick Football Board, um, can I just say, today I suppose sees the end of one of the best uh, 21 football championships ever played in the county. It's been spoken about far and wide since last October. <laughs> and I think it's fair to say that both, both John Bradford and, Ra and St Mary Sean Finns of Ratkeel played a huge part in that um, all the way through. I suppose it's also fair to say that both teams came through to the final kind of against the head. That wouldn't have been fair to the start of the year. But that's sport and you put in a mighty effort and uh, you fully deserved your victory today. I suppose I don't particularly want to comment on... on, on uh, the controversy during the week. Just suffice it to say that the 21 Premier Final was won and lost um, on the field of play. Um, yeah. I know that's all. Yeah. That's all. That's all. Um,
everybody wanted it. Um, can I also, just to say a, a special word of thanks to Richard Maloney and his team of officials, his linesmen and his old players, who did an exceptional job. And just to remember, I suppose it's a difficult uh, job being a referee, but it's, it, it's important to point out that without the referees, we couldn't have a game today. So well done to Richie and to his officials. Yeah, yeah. And I also thank Con and the ground staff here in McNeville Park for having the pitch in such fine order. It's a fantastic venue in the centre of the county and it's been used quite a bit as well by the county board. And we would hope that you know, in years to come we'll have a bit more comfort for the supporters and we'll have a stand there in place uh, over the coming years. Today, I suppose the final uh, the replay mightn't have lived up to the expectations because we had a fantastic drawing game um, on New Year's Eve. But I think today, uh, uh, St Mary Sean Finns were the better team. Everybody would agree with that. You fully deserve your victory. You were brilliant in your victory. And John Bradford were gallant in defeat as well. So just to, to, to pay a tribute to both teams for serving up a fine game of football. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. My uh, first official presentation of a former sports being appointed uh, chair of the football board and you know it's always a very very pleasant occasion and it now gives me great pleasure to present the cup uh, to, the, to a gallant captain of, of uh, St Mary Sean Finns, Darren Jones. <laughs> Keep this nice and sharp tonight because I'm not great at speeches. But um, <coughs> first of all, I want to thank uh, Brian Duggan, Dean, Mark, and Karen Berry. Uh, down through well through the year and for the last week, he kept us concentrated on the county final. Even though things went against us, boys, it was hard. To, it was hard to stay concentrated while everything was going on. But Brian, Dean, Karen, and Mark, he drilled it into us, boys. We were prepared for the county final from day one, no matter what happened, and that's what we did, boys. I would say thanks for that and thanks for all the training. Uh, second of all, I would thank the boys, teammates, every one of you boys. Absolutely excellent boys. Every down and down training boys. Everything's done, match pace, everything's done nice and quick boys. Don't even have to ask. Warm up, everything is perfect. Come in today, attitudes are great boys. Didn't even have to open them up and dress them to where we usually do is to wake you up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, second of all, for the three boys, Garod, Mikey, Andrew. Who are the, uh, the player today and Sean Moy, who was injured, got injured in the first game against Drum, John Wall. Boys, we won a few boys, the boys on the side and they couldn't get on. We did this for uh, Last year, I'd like to thank Drum. Brilliant game, boys. Two, the four games we played, they were good games. Good, fine sporting games. Even with the black art there, boys, still a physical game, like, couldn't put anything wrong. And uh, I'd like to thank you, boys, for. Wanting to, wanting to win the game on the field of play, but he's not, not taking the trophy above in your own, uh, your own boardroom. So, uh, oh, right, uh, right, uh, right, uh, three cheers to drum boys. Hooray! Hooray!